you pray with me, please? Holy and all loving God, once more we enter into this holy place with praise upon our lips and thanks within our hearts. Thankful that you have given each and every one of us life again this morning, enabling us to gather into this holy place sing songs to your holy name and hear your word proclaimed once more. And therefore, may all the words that leave my mouth and all the meditations of our hearts be pleasing unto you, O God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. You know that every year I make the point on this day that it is indeed still Christmas time. Today is the last day, however. For tomorrow, January 6th, is the Feast of the Epiphany, a.k.a. the commemoration of the visit of the Magi to the Christ Child, also known as the 12th day of Christmas, and also known as the final end to the Christmas holiday season. So I hope there are still some signs of Christmas in your home. (laughs) Not Jeff, I saw you taking them down yesterday on Facebook, but (laughs) maybe there's still some eggnog that needs some drinking, some fruitcake that still needs some eating or throwing away, nativity sets that still need to be packed away. I hope there is still something in your life to remind you of Christmas. For even though the season is coming to an end, Christmas is never really over. Or at least, it shouldn't be. For we always be on bended knee looking into cradles holding wonders of joy. We should always see angels in our midst calling us to the praise and worship of God. And we should always be finding ways to present ourselves as gifts to God. The visuals and sounds of Christmas can be put away for another year, but that does not mean we have to put away all the joy, the memory, the glory that glory which Isaiah speaks so eloquently about when he says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You know, these two seasons that we just came through, Advent and Christmas, they are both meant to give us an acknowledgement that even though our lives are often punctuated with darkness, we don't have to live in darkness. That we can discover that the light has indeed come for us. That we can become familiar with the glory of the Lord in our own lives. To believe that this glory has indeed risen upon us even when darkness seems to creep in on us. And we have actually spent a considerable amount of time this year acknowledging that both darkness and life often coexist in our lives, even when we are in the midst of all these Christmas celebrations. For actually, it does not matter what season it might be. No one, no one escapes unhappiness. We just do not need to become imprisoned by it. And that, my friends, is the good news for today. Epiphany. When these words will ring true in all of our lives... Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness may cover the earth, but the Lord shall rise upon you, and the glory of the Lord will rest upon you.
Each year when we celebrate Epiphany, we go to great lengths lengths to explain what it means. So if you look the word Epiphany up in the dictionary, it usually gives two meanings. The first, of course, is a reference to the Christian holiday we're celebrating today. The the arrival of the, the Magi to pay homage to the baby Jesus. The second definition defines the word according to its roots. And the root of the word epiphany simply means a revelation, something that is revealed to us, something that is made known to us, specifically from above. And if you know how to pick words apart, epi from epiphany, epi means above, like epidermis, the top layer of skin and the second half means something revealed to us. (laughs) I don't know. And the epiphany of Jesus is the revelation to the whole world that God has been born into the world. Right? Emmanuel, God with us. And the three wise men, the magi, They represent the whole world coming to see Jesus. And when they all decide that they should travel to Jerusalem because of a sign they saw up in the heavens, a bright shining star that shone upon upon them, well, that represents the sudden realization that Jesus Christ was born to love and to save the whole world. That's what epiphany means. That Jesus Christ is born into the world to love and save the whole world. And the three wise men, one, two, three, they represent the whole world, which is why they look different, hopefully, in your manger set. But here's the part that I want you to just sit and take in for a few moments. Epiphany is the realization that God so loves you, that God so wants to become known by you, that God so wants to be present in all aspects of your lives that God came down from those shining stars above to become one of us, to show us in human terms what is the divine nature of hope, peace, joy, and love. That is what epiphany means. And that is what we should commit to memory the rest of the year. For what good is it to have an epiphany if it doesn't help help us to live our lives more fully? To live our lives with more light than darkness? For epiphany is the light that shines upon us, a light that can never go out. Now, that being said, I do want to talk a little, more, a little bit more this morning about some of the darkness that surrounds us in our lives. For as I have spoken with many of you this holiday season... I have learned a little bit about the darkness that creeps into our lives. And for some, that darkness has been great. Loved ones who have died. Memories of loved ones. Memories of broken relationships. Memories of of harms done to us, or perhaps some harm we did to somebody else. Come to think of it, it seems that darkness lives a lot in our memories. 
And for others, that darkness is more seasonal, you could say, especially during this season. When others are celebrating, we just don't feel like celebrating. Sometimes depression gets the better of us, and we can't go join in all those reindeer games others are playing, even though we kind of want to. So while the this, this season of celebration may leave us out, the revelation of God's love never leaves us out. For God does not leave anyone out in the darkness on their own. For God is the never-ending light in our darkness. The light that we acknowledge being born into the world again on Christmas Eve, that light still shines and is meant to draw us nearer and nearer to God, that light that does not dim in our lives, that light that is the lamp upon our feet to guide us in this world. And this juxtaposition, this coexistence of light and dark, you know, we experience this our entire lives. And what these seasons, these spiritual seasons like Christmas and Advent, what they are meant to give us is hope. That even though darkness may cover the earth and its people, the glory of the Lord shines upon the people. And the glory of the Lord, or sometimes we call it the love of God or the salvation of Jesus or the sunshine of the Spirit, they're all the same thing. And that's the best revelation of all. Our sudden realization, our epiphany, that the love of God is indeed our shining star and that star is shines upon us forever. Even when it seems that the best we can do is hope for a little bit of hope. Hope for a star in our lives. Hope that God is coming for us too. And I know what that's like. For in my life, too, I I need some light to shine on me. I could certainly use a good dose of the glory of the Lord to help me get through my days. But thank God, the epiphany revealed to me each and every day is is the revelation that this star of hope, this light, is also meant for me, too just as it is meant for you and you and you. For when Jesus Christ was born into this world, you know, his glory was not kept dim in some old cattle stall somewhere. His glory shined forth and continues to shine forth for the whole world to see. For when we open up and let this light actually come in and shine upon us, our whole lives will change. And we will suddenly know love as something from within, not dependent on the light and darkness of this world, but on the eternal light of God's love. Something that cannot be snuffed out. When we come to know epiphany as that something from within, well, we're going to know light and love like the likes we've never even heard of before. We will know that God is love and actually loves us. We will know that the love of God born into this world came so that God could actually be with us. 
we will know that God's Son, who once walked right alongside us, now comes to us in spirit, always reaching out to us in every touch, in every embrace, in every kiss given in God's name. And we will know that just as this spirit is entered to our lives, our lives are integral to the Spirit. For once more, what epiphany means is that God so loves us that God is the one who comes and searches us out each and every day to draw us in a little closer, embrace us a little tighter. so that we may know deep within our hearts that we are the beloved, the blessed, beautiful children of God. We'll walk in a rainbow of light that eclipses any darkness that nips at our heels. For we are now the ones created We are now the ones born into this world to embrace one another, to love one another, and to pray for one another. My friends, when we look upon one another with the love of Jesus, God looks back at us and smiles. And that is the greatest epiphany of all. Amen. 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 Will you pray with me, please? Gracious and holy God, you have shown us that your love extends to the ends of the earth and stretches beyond our imaginations. We thank you for such expansive love and for the rich varieties of ways that you make yourself known among us. God, today we especially pray for all of those who are quick to rally towards war and those who are quick to retaliate, bent on revenge, which is the farthest thing from love. God, we pray for those who need to hear your beckoning, to hear your voices above the symbols of war, and to turn our swords into plows, sowing peace where there is now only fear and hate. God, we also pray this day for all of those who are seeking you, whether it be out of the aching of their own hearts or in the daily prayers we offer to you so faithfully. God, we ask that you give us purpose and meaning in our lives that is grounded in your love and and your compassion and your grace. And God, we always pray for those who weep in our world those bent over heavy with grief, overcome by anxiety and depression, struggling with with illness or recovery, and all of us who find ourselves estranged from from one another and, and ultimately your presence. Send the light and the peace of your spirit so that we may know the joy of your companionship. In the holy name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, let let us all take a moment of silence and allow the Spirit of the Lord to shine upon our hearts.